Okay. Good morning. We're we're excited to be here this morning. Uh, this is Miracles on the Street, and today we're presenting uh, Unclaimed Truth with Don Dismuth, who's sitting next to me. And I think the topic for today, because last time we brought you, what's it to be born again? So we're just going to bring you some nuggets of truth that uh, will stir you up inside. And hopefully because of that, you'll go back and continue to try to get your relationship with the Lord where it, where it would benefit you to be. And this morning, I'm, I'm just going to bring you along with Don. I'm going to bring you something that will stir you up. And it's really, it's speak the word is what it's all about. Because that's what God demonstrated. And I've got this for you. It's, it's you become what you think. And I'll explain it this way real shortly. Positive thoughts and low amounts of stress create an alkaline pH in your body. Meaning it would be very hard for you to get sick. Negative thoughts, on the other hand, and emotions and high levels of stress cause the body to become acidic, leading to illness and sickness. And I'll jump from that over to Don, who's unclaimed truth, and he's going to bring you some nuggets that he's been um, meditating upon. And Don? There's a fly in there. Beelzebub. Oh. <laughs> anyway, hey, hey, welcome to my house. Come on in. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. We're going to talk about healing and health, and both of us, you know, we've got a little bit different stuff, but basically it's the same, the same thing. And uh, we've been uh, sitting in the presence here for a little bit, and we just you know, want you to, to to take a moment, and we just you know. Invite the presence of God into your presence. Just we thank you, Father God, that everything that you've given us. We thank you that you've given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Your word, it is written in your word that, that we are, you sent your word and healed us. And, and we declare these things this day, Father God, in our lives, over our children, over our families, over our wives, and, and uh, over our relatives and over our friends, and over our house. We receive what you poured out upon us, Father God. And we just love you, Father. We just thank you. Papa God, we thank you, Father, for all your grace and your mercy for changing us, for opening our eyes and our understanding and showing us the hope of your calling that we, you brought us in the part of you. And we thank you for that. We ask you to reveal that to us. Holy Spirit, lead us into all truth. We declare that you do and we receive that you do. And we proclaim that, that who's ever watching this is touched by your word and touched by your presence. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we just thank you for manifesting right now your glory through us. And that your golden words, your life giving words speak forth. That we pursue love, we desire fruit of gifts, and especially that we may prophesy the word of God spoken through us, literally and manifested in the flesh through us, that we are living epistles also. And we thank you, Father God. There's no amen at the end of Acts, and we're still going. We thank you, Father, Father God. We, I just wanted to say, you know, I got, I got this today that we need to proclaim our, our blessings, that we need to, to speak forth, you know, what he, he's given us, that, that Terry was talking about being positive, that when I, I used to, uh, I was in a rock and roll band and, and I started drinking because I was, uh, 16, 15 years old and, uh, it, I was so nervous to get up in front of a crowd and we were on TV and we opened up for some name people. And had big crowds to open up to, and and I was just a little teenage kid, and uh, so I started drinking a little bit to calm down and to have enough courage to get out there. And it turned into more, and uh, you know, it, it, I worked for a steel mill for 16 years, and you have to be a steel worker, you have to sign a paper to be a bona fide alcoholic, and you know, so it, it was all you know like a setup to drink to use stuff to. Those were the days when everybody was smoking pot, or I thought everybody was, when I quit, I found out not everybody was. But, but, uh, you know, and I started reading Positive Mental Attitude 
Because because when you're down, you feel down. Oh my, this is not right. That's not right. And you're oh, I'm not feel good. And I'm I'm bummed. And I'm not worried. I'm the job and the wife and the kids and the and everything. So I'll just go drink. And then you, you know you get drunk, and the next day your problems are a hundred times worse than they were the day before. And you know, so I started reading parts of the latitude books, and they all pointed to Jesus. But I saw this one guy said one time he wore like a a necklace around your neck and one side says negative mental attitude he said NMA or positive mental attitude PMA and you turn that necklace charm whatever you want to call it whichever don't say charm because they're going to think you're related to them they won't like to the church and that's it keep, keep, keep the green bar we're yeah. setting quite a ways away oh. okay sorry about that but you know so you you decide what you're going to choose you, you know decide you know, God said the Father said in Deuteronomy that I set before you this day life and death, choose life. So it's you choose how you're going to react to these situations. When the doctor tells you you have something that's that's life threatening, you can, you know, I've seen people where they, they receive that as like a prophetic spoken thing over their lives. And they the doctor says you have a year to live. And they, to that day, they almost die because they respect that guy and think he's an authoritative figure. He's been to eight years of school. You know, they forget that he snorted coke and was in a fraternity and had parties and, you know, blew his mind with drinking booze from a keg up off the wall and everything else. They're just thinking that, boy, and you see about these college students and what they're doing in college. And then you're going to respect this dude's thoughts on what's wrong with your body. Go get a second opinion. But the second opinion is that you're healed. They healed leprosy. The guy's losing his ears and losing his nose. And Jesus healed, what was it, nine of them, ten of them? And only one came back and thanked him and worshipped him. And that one that came back was made whole. That means if he was missing his ears or nose, he got that back. See, nowadays we have the, the say the prayer, go to heaven thing, and that's all they preach is, is salvation. But the word salvation is so-so, totally, completely made whole, spirit, soul, and body. Made whole. That's what holiness is. Made whole in the spirit. Made whole by God. Made whole in him. That you're part of him. That you understand that you're part of him. But you have to declare it. We just think that, that God has sprinkled a little fairy dust over our head when we said the prayer. And then we just go on our life and he's going to take care of us. Well, you know, you still need to proclaim. That's what praying is about. Praying is about laying the pathway for your day, for your life. That this is going to happen today. That God has blessed me. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed coming. I'm blessed going. His favor surrounds me like a shield. This is the most blessed day of my life. I'm going to go out here. I'm part of your creation, Father God. I'm at one with all your creation. I'm at one with the universe. That's why I call this a solar plexus. This is the temple. You're the temple of God. I'm going on here. Praise God. I hope you got it. Send money. Thank you, Father God. Terry, take it. <laughs> uh, what he's saying is what I agree with. We, we've got to say that which is positive but he, because words have power. And you can speak that which is negative and increase body stress. Turn your body's pH from alkaline to acidic. Words can change the way you think and feel. The body has an immune system which fights off any imbalance or disease, virus, germ, and catch any bacteria or virus. Your body fights it off. When your immune system is very weak, you're susceptible uh, to virus or bacteria. The mind, which is a beautiful thing used to uh, uplift the Lord, the mind can cause the immune system to be strong and change the genetic DNA structure in your body by what you think and say. And an example of that would be, have you ever walked into a room and you could tell that the person is mad just by the feel that's in the room without words being said or anything else? You can feel the anger. It's in the air. Um, stress, negative thoughts. Words coming out of your mouth will turn your body pH either acetic or alkaline, which creates an environment, again, where illness and sickness can thrive. And, and God said he's created us awesomely in, after him. He's created us, our bodies. Our bodies was created to heal itself. So we're giving you some, some words of wisdom and thoughts here that we need to be careful what we're saying. We need to say what God says about us. He, he said that he 
He has created us in his image. He's made us the head and not the tail. He's made us above and beneath. And that comes back from teaching I've had a long time ago. But God, God has created us that what we speak out of our mouth actually affects our bodies. There's a mind, the body uh, interacts, and it interacts in a powerful way that affects a person's health. The digestive system is profoundly controlled by the mind and the brain. Anxiety, depression, and fear dramatically affect the function of this system, our bodies. And so God created us in a way that we can walk like him, talk like him, and, and confess his word. But see, things come in that we shouldn't allow to come in. Thoughts change our emotions. Uh, imaginations, imagine something that came out of nowhere, have a thought of something that came out of nowhere, and we dramatically affect and change our body's health by entertaining and meditating upon that thought. And as Don said, the Word says to meditate upon the Word of God. Begin to see. And um, when you see something, you see it. How do we say that? We, we, we see the unseen. But right now, like Don said, we see what's in front of us. And what's in front of us may be a, a negative situation. Uh, and we allow the situation to dictate the outcome. And that's not what God's word says for us to do. Because he, he's given us the power over all that. Because if he's in us and we're in him, then we can imitate him. You, know, you got more to add to that? Or? Well, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the evidence. I mean, it's like this one guy said, it's like the... The glue that holds the, the book together, you know, I mean, it's like, which, according to that, that was a very good analogy. <laughs> I've had that one for years. But, uh, you know, it's like faith is the evidence. So your faith, your believing, you're seeing, but then you need to, you need to see it in the spirit. You need to meditate. You, have, you know, for years they taught us how to pray and we're supposed to, you know, besiege God. We're supposed to storm the gates of heaven and keep back the gates of hell and we're, they all make it weird, 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 weird. When, when you know, it's supposed to, uh, you're supposed to trust in God. You have to put on Christ. You have to walk as Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That we've been made part of Him. That He's the vine. We're the branch. He's the head. We're the body. We're really part of Him. So, if, you know, if it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives with me, I've been crucified with Him, and yet I've been risen with Him also. So then, and, and He also ascended. He took mankind. Try this one on for size. Send us letters. Come on, I dare you. Uh, emails. Uh, whatever you want to send us, cash, large bills. Uh, you know, uh, anyway, he ascended into heaven and he took the body, it was a glorified body, when he was still, he came into mankind to bring us up and took us into the Trinity. Uh, he's in a glorified body with still the holes in his hand, sitting at the right hand of the Father. He took mankind into the Trinity. Boy, that would get you stoned in some churches, you say that, you know, but I don't care anymore. Because these guys are all tradition. They're all, they made these stories up from, from way back when. They brought in, uh, Dante's Inferno, you know, and, and they brought in old traditions and scare you with hell so you come back next week and give more money. They're, all they're trying to do is control you. I'm tired of control. The government wants to control us. The government making us buy things we don't want to buy. The, the church says you gotta pay us or you're gonna go to hell. Or you're, you're, you're not gonna get well. You're gonna be cursed because you don't, you know, pay the tithe. Jesus became a curse for us. So everything that hung is on a tree, hung on a tree is a curse. It became a curse for us. He took everything away from us. So what we're saying today is life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those that eat it shall eat, those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What you're speaking out in your life is what you get. We're created in the image and likeness of God. And God spoke the world into existence. He spoke people, all of creation into existence. So if we're created in his image and likeness, which we are, then what we speak into our life, if we're speaking negative, if we're speaking depressed, I heard, I don't, you know, nobody loves me. I'm going to go out and, and, and spit nails and, and, and howl at the moon because nobody loves me. You know, then you're, what you put out as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So how you pronounce who you are, who you proclaim. And I've never heard any preacher tell me that I should proclaim that I'm part of God. You know, they, they always, especially the Protestants where I grew up, you know, they, they, they never want to say that. 
They'll tell you you're going to heaven. You, you read Ephesians. It's like in him, in him, in him, in him. What do you think in him means? What do you think that, you know, and, and that we're part of him? In John 17, you know, the, I'm in you, Father, and the Father's in me, and we're all in each other. Does it stop when you do that? No, it's still running. Okay. Praise God. We're we're back. We took a short commercial. That was the, that was the <laughs> evil thing coming in here, messing with us. It was that fly. And then they make up all these stories of all these things the boogeyman's going to get you. And maybe there is because we're only using 10 to 50% of our brain, which could be wrong. But I think the way that they've been doing this for a long time, you know, in the year 350 AD, when it all got tweaked, one guy said that the, the, the beast that they're always talking about, the mark of the beast and everything was religion. And they said it was wounded and then it rose again in Revelation. It talks about this. And he was saying that from the year when Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection, Till 350 AD, the beast was down and there was no religion. Jesus didn't have a church on every corner with his name. You don't see him having a church with pews and, and purple carpet. You know, he didn't even have anywhere like that. He spoke outside. He went to the people. And now all these guys want to spend $4.5 million on a building and, and all these people are, are homeless. It doesn't sound like God to me, but you know, we're, we're part of him. And you have to understand that if they do these things against me, if this sickness comes against my body, they're actually doing it against Christ because I'm part of his body. My hand is not me, but it's part of me. So I'm not saying that I'm Christ, but I'm part of Christ. And so are you. Every one of you are called, anointed, set apart. But you have to believe that, that you have this anointing. I don't care what the pastor says. The pastor says he's a man of God and you're not. That's wrong. You're the man of God also, and the pastor was put there to find out what your call in your life is and plug you into that hole. But they want you to come back next week. And that's why their churches are emptying out quicker than they can they can buy a new PA system. Anyway, if you speak in love about yourself, each one of us, Peter says that each one of us are living stones. We're living stones that built upon each other. We make the temple of God, the temple of God. So each one of us, where our fingerprints are different, how we were raised was different, how we think is different. So each one of us gets stuff from Father. You get you, you meditate, you sit in silence and listen and be still and know that I am God. You come inside. The King Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. We just listen to what the kingdom of God is. You ever seen what the throne of God is? Woo! That's a lot of stuff in here. Seems like to me that that would be part of the kingdom. And so you meditate on that, and then you bring what you get to the fellowship. Because you are the church. You're not going to church. You are the church to mingle with other stones, living stones. And then out of that, we bring the love of God to the world. Now, they're, you know, Sunday and Wednesday nights, and that's all we're doing. We need to break out of this with a sickness, cancer. One guy said that cancer in the body of Christ is like, is, is like Goliath was to David. Who is that uncircumcised Philistine that's coming against the true and living God? That's us. We're the true and living God in him. He's the vine. We're the branch. I said this before. You know, we're so brainwashed that we think, oh, man, that, that's almost sacrilegious to say that I'm part of God. But you are. And you need to proclaim it in your life and over your kid's life. And you need to teach them love from the get-go, not how to get to college. Everybody's going crazy about how to get a degree so they can be out there and be like the rest of them greedy people that kill people for a dollar. You know, I mean, give me a break here. Hallelujah. Go. <laughs> what I'd like to do is, is sum it up in my own way what, what Donnie is saying. And we're talking about God's word and we're talking about faith and we need to see it with our eye of faith. And so we see with the physical eye and what we see with our physical eye does not agree with the word of God. The promise or the promises of God for the world system, for the world system, shapes the seen things around us. And yes, they are not only seen real, they are real, but the Word of God says that they are subject to change. And that, that's what we need to do, is see it through the eye of faith. Uh, see, the unseen realm is more real than the seen realm. And so, I'll close it with this. Words produce images inside of us, but sometimes we get these images by making wrong assumptions. And that's what he's been talking about. Uh, 
we we get into a circumstance that's negative. We begin to say what we're seeing about that negative circumstance. And what happens is by doing that, we're, we're getting into stress. We're getting into depression. We're getting into a lot of things and it's affecting our health because it's not positive. It's not the word of God. You know that doctors right now are telling people that have cancer to begin to speak positive things into their life. And like Donnie said, it will make changes in your body. There are people that have said, I'm healed because God already did it. They have a cancer and the cancer actually diminishes and goes away. And anywhere you look on the internet, you can see these stories. Doctors are beginning to come into agreement that God is God, that he's not a man that he would lie, and it, it, we're created in his image. They even have some churches, I mean some hospitals, lay hands on sick people, even though they're not doing it in a religious or what they don't understand, a spiritual way. They, they see that there's a benefit from people laying hands on other people. And the Bible says believers shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I, I want to say one, one thing, too, that, that uh, I started, there's been rumors or there's been things on the internet about, about the the nuclear waste that was dumped by Japan in the Pacific Ocean that it's going, you know, all the fish have it in their body and everything. And, and uh, you know, but the word says, if I pray over my food and give thanks for it, really, if I give thanks for it and speak the word over it, which is Christ, Yeshua, Jesus, and I shall eat any deadly thing and it shall not harm me. Well, I've been doing that with, you know, I've been, you know, I, we need to proclaim, especially when you go to a restaurant, you don't know where they got that food. You don't know what they did to that food. That you need to pray and thank God that this food is wholesome and nourishing to your body. And, and you need to, to, to speak these things out like we were saying. You need, you just can't lay back and say that, that my angel is taking care of me. I think God, we're moving up into a different level of, of spiritualism where, you know, it's been, they said that the guys back right after Jesus' resurrection, that they turned the world upside down. They're, and we're 2,000 years later and, and we're just, we're, Breaking wind, man. I mean, we're, you know, you look at the churches, they're, they're, you know, the ABC Channel 7, and those guys are getting, taking kids' toys and food, and they're feeding people, and the churches are struggling. They're not even having enough money. You know, they tell you to bring a can of Campbell's soup for the poor people, you know, and then, but they're going to build a rec hall for the kids, you know. I mean, the whole thing is just nuts. We are the love of God. It's, you know, He's given us that love that's in us, you know, and we have to go first things first, too. It says, first of all, you must believe that God is. And that is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He rewards you if you seek him. And that's sort of a paradoxical thing here, too, because he's in you. How do you seek somebody that's in you? But he wants you to show him attention. If you love somebody, you're going to show them attention. If you never talked to your wife or your husband or whoever, you know, and you kept telling, well, 20 years ago, I told you I loved you. Don't you remember? You know, I mean, you're going to have a, a few problems in your life here. And But with God, too, you have to... You, that's what prayer is, is communication, talking to him and then listening to what he has to say and tell him that you love him. You must, you know, the first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. So if we do things in order, first things first, believe that he is, love him with all our heart, and then his love flows to us to others. And, and because of the stress is gone, they told Terry he had open heart surgery because of stress. So, I mean, so, you know, that was 85% of the reason, not, not 100%, but a big high number of the reason or whatever it was. But, but you know, that stress can cause all sorts of stuff. I mean, the ulcers and everything else that because you're in stress and worrying about the bills and, and worry is a sin. Everything that's not a faith is a sin. It says that in Romans. So, I mean, so we need to come in and start doing the things of God. We need to be start being doers and, and, and instead of just hearers of the word. You have to be a doer of the word. You know, we're a human, you're a human being. You have to be what you're supposed to be. That's why we're a being and we come from the main being, you know. And glory to God. We just hope you guys get this. We want to see you well. We want to see you blessed. We want to see you, you know, we're, we're coming into this thing. We don't really, you know, I mean, our whole theology has changed in the last two years. We were talking about that, how, how from, you know, I mean, the, you come from this religiosity, this Catholicism and how they just want to scare the crap out of you that if you don't do right, you're going to hell and your family's going to hell and your dog's going to die, you know, if you don't do what we tell you. And it's like, there's a scripture in, in uh, 
Revelation that says God hates the sin of the Nicolaitans, and that Nicol means above, and Laetan is laity, the people. He who puts himself above the people, God hates that. And all these guys are doing that. They're saying they're this. They're saying they're that. And they put, you know, we've been both ordained, and we don't come on here and tell you that we're Pope Terry and Pope Don, you know, the Bishop of, of, of Val Vista. You know, I mean, we don't do that. You know, as a bishop, I got a new Cadillac of El Dorado out there, and they made me a bishop. I mean, you know, just because you're related to the pastor, they make you a bishop or give you how many, if you look on the internet, how many apostles they are. You know, they're 600 pounds overweight and they've been divorced 16 times and they're an apostle. It says in the book of Revelation that God gave them an attaboy because they found out, they looked out, sought out who the false apostles were. Now, I don't want people to go around and do that either because that's, you know, is it a wolf? Is it a sheep? Is it a goat? You know, that thing was crazy back in the 80s. But I mean, but. Well, let's walk in truth. Let's find out who we are. I don't care about who Billy Job, uh, Bishop Billy Joe Bob is. You know, I care about, I have to find out who I am. And then as a living stone, put my stone with the other stones and we build what God wants us to push forth in this world of love and, and walk in health. Divine health, you know, came to me a while back. That none of the apostles died from sickness. Jesus didn't die from sickness. Nobody died from cancer. Nobody died from whatever the diseases were back then. But nowadays, everybody's dropping dead, you know, from these diseases. One guy said, maybe God's doing like a slow rapture. That's not, I don't, no, I don't, I don't believe that. But, but, you know, I mean, we have to come to the point where we speak forth these things. And I've taken too much time again, so now you're going to have to send it to me. <laughs> what we'd like you to do as we close out this broadcast is send us an email. Don't beat on us. Don't put us down. We're just trying to bring you some encouraging words of wisdom for you to search it out and for you to get, if it is great, if it isn't, then do something with your relationship with Christ Jesus because we really want to see people delivered and set free, made whole, of which God already said well, they I understand are. understand that you already are, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah. Interact with us. Add to what we said. If you get a, a thought while we're talking, write it down and, and email us. And let's, let's expand on this. Call your email. My email is don24ald at yahoo.com. And my email is miraclesonthestreet at yahoo.com. God bless. Read that or two. Ciao. Sign off. I'll read it. Make it easy. Thank mm -hmm.